When you think of this creature, you most likely have an image of it plodding along slowly through the trees, or maybe even lazily scooping honey out of a jar. The truth is that very few move quicker than these killer fuzzballs, at least in evolutionary terms. This is the evolution of bears. Hi, I'm Danielle Dufault and you're watching Paleologic. How did we go from this to this? While there are currently only eight species of bears, they certainly all strive to be different. Bears range from the smallest sun bear, which inhabits tropical rainforests and weighs about the same as a Great Dane, all the way up to the Big Papa Kodiak bear, which can reach up to 750 kilograms. Their diets vary wildly, from the giant panda's bamboo root meals to the berry and fish-heavy American black bear palate, to the polar bear's unquenchable thirst for marine mammal fat. Though they vary so much in their appearance, habitat, and behavior, all bear species are actually not so distantly related. That's because of their wide-ranging adaptations occurred in a relatively short period of time, over the course of just five million years. Bears are believed to have descended from a common ancestor they shared with eared seals, walruses, and true seals, their closest living relatives. One of these possible early ancestors was Perictus, which was smaller than a cat and would have looked more like a wolverine. About 25 million years ago, the first undisputed bears showed up on the scene. Ursavus elmensis, aka the dawn bear, was about the size of a fox and lived in Europe during the early Miocene, when the climate there was subtropical. From there evolved the slightly larger Ursavus primavus and Ursavus brevirhinus, setting the trend for the increase in size that bears experienced as they continued to evolve into the giants we know today. Bears are one of the most well-studied groups of carnivorans, and we've actually been able to trace their recent history, like that of the European cave bears. Cave bears appeared 20,000 years ago and lived until the last glacial maximum, the coldest period of the last ice age, around 25,000 years ago. The fossil record of cave bears is rich, with over 100,000 individuals being found. Ursus spoleus is the most well-studied cave bear and was big and stocky, with the largest being about the size of a grizzly bear. Fossil hunters in Slovakia during the 1700s who found cave bear remains referred to them as old dragon bones because of their massive size. Although cave bears were alive during the Stone Age, and we have evidence that they were hunted by humans, their extinction likely wasn't due to overhunting. Instead, evidence points to them being killed by the harsh glacial winters. The closest living relatives to cave bears are brown bears and polar bears, and they diverged about three million years ago. The teeth of cave bears suggest that their diets were closer to omnivorous brown bears than to hypercarnivorous polar bears. Ursus deningeri, also known as Deninger's bears, who lived during the early to middle Pleistocene, were the likely cave bear ancestors of Ursus spoleus. These two bears were very similar, except Deningeri was slightly smaller. The shift from Deningeri to Spoleus happened around the middle to late Pleistocene, with lots of intermediate fossils being found. These fossils, also called transitional fossils, show the characteristics of both the ancestor and the descendant, bridging the gap between the two. Deningeri descended from an even earlier bear ancestor, the early Pleistocene omnivore Ursus etruscus, which started out small and then tended towards a larger body size. Etruscus itself evolved from Ursus minimus, which is believed to be one of the earliest members of the Ursinae subfamily. This primitive bear ancestor also started out small and tended to increase in size over time. Are we noticing a pattern? 
Bears are some of the few omnivorous carnivorans, and they're also some of the biggest. The other large carnivorans are often hypercarnivores to help power their giant bodies with high-calorie prey. Being omnivorous gives an animal more flexibility in finding food, but usually other omnivores from the carnivora order stay small in size, hardly ever reaching 20 kilograms. One study suggests that in addition to energy conservation through hibernation in the winter, the chewing pattern bears evolved to grind up plants allows them to more efficiently pull the nutrients out of the plant matter and thus become giant despite a mixed diet. Much like brown bears, cave bears hibernated during the winter, but the accuracy of the term hibernated has been debated. That's because brown bears don't actually sleep all winter, but rather simply lower their body temperatures and don't eat, drink, pee, or poop for three to seven months of the year. Most of the time, however, they are in a fitful sleep and are easy to rouse. And mother bears will give birth to and nurse their young during this period of denning. Part of the reason we have so many European cave bears is because they often died during this denning period, leaving their large bones to fossilize in the caves. Over in North America, the giant short-faced bear Arctotus simus split from its common ancestor with a spectacled bear about six million years ago. Don't let the short in their name fool you. These bears were huge. At almost three and a half meters tall on their hind legs, with some larger males weighing up to a thousand kilograms, they were the largest carnivorous land mammals to inhabit North America. They were also incredibly fast for their size, with estimates putting them at speeds of 40 kilometers an hour. They had long limbs with forward-facing toes, ideal for running, and a huge nasal passage, perfect for taking in lots of oxygen during a chase. These long legs suggest they were dwellers of the open grasslands that developed during the environmental changes of the Miocene-Pliocene boundary. There is still debate about whether American short-faced bears were true carnivores like polar bears or omnivores like today's brown bears. Research into the polar bear genome has revealed that they diverged from brown bears very recently, within just the last 500,000 years. The same study showed that polar bears adjusted to their high-fat diet of mostly blubbery seals within just 20,000 generations. That might sound like a lot compared to the span of a human life, but in evolutionary terms, that's essentially light speed. They're still so similar that brown and polar bears can mate and have fertile offspring. These hybrids are called pizzlies or roller bears, depending on who the papa bear is. When species are genetically similar, they can sometimes make hybrids. But if they're too different, these hybrids themselves won't have the ability to reproduce, like in the case of mules. Finally, we can't talk about bear evolution and ignore the gentle giant. Despite the relatively recent evolution of other bear species, the panda dares to be different. The giant panda diverged from the rest of bears about 19 million years ago and is the only living species in its genus, Iluropoda. It is also the only strictly vegetarian of the group and has one of the strongest bite forces of any land animal. Considering how strong bamboo is, I guess it needs all that chomping power. One of the greatest threats of extinction to modern bear species is human changes to their environment, be that through pollution, climate change, or deforestation. Currently, six of the eight living bear species are facing the risk of extinction. Perhaps we can prevent the next great extinction event of these incredible and unique animals.
So what should we talk about next? Please let me know in the comments and be sure to subscribe for new episodes every week. Thanks for watching. See ya! The teeth of cave bears suggest that their diet was closer to omnivorous brown bears than to carnivorous... Uh, uh, I'm gonna go hypercarnivorous. Uh...